Hi, my name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland, where I teach decorative painting workshops. I also go around the country teaching classes as well as doing commission projects in people's homes, businesses, restaurants, casinos, stores, you name it. However, today what I'm going to do is show you a, a plaster technique using an Italian-made plaster called Marmarino and an Italian-made paint simply called Lime Paint to show you a technique that we call French Country. Let's get our tools, let's get our materials, and let's get started. So the first thing I've done to prepare for the French plaster is I've base coated the surface using a flat paint. Uh, you can use, well, pretty much use any color you want. It doesn't matter because this plaster is very thick and it's going to bury the color of the, the base coat. I rolled it on using a very fine nap roller. Um, I would never roll it on with anything heavier than a half inch nap roller. So the tools for today are going to be our stainless steel texturing trowel that we've used in a, for heavy, heavy textured plasters and a spatula and we want stainless steel mainly because this is a lighter colored plaster uh, blue steel tools drywall trowel tools can tend to leave blackish blue carbon marks because of the high carbon content the texture trowels again the, um, I don't use these I don't interchange my tools between fine plasters and heavy textures or any kind of textured plaster because of the aggregate in the plaster could uh, scratch the trowel and leave a mark and then if I go to use that in my very fine plasters like my smooth polished plasters it's going to leave scratch marks all through it so I just have different tools for different things the plaster we're going to use today is simply the Marmarino and it is a uh, medium style Marmarino meaning Marmarinos are all different depending on the manufacturer of different parts of the region they come from but there are no two are really ever the same this is ha has a uh, medium sized aggregate it's a lime based plaster so it's lime you gotta be very careful when you can work with it because if it uh, gets in your eyes it could burn if it lays on your skin too long it could leave a little red mark so the biggest everybody's like should I wear glo gloves should I wear glasses gloves uh, if you feel want to you can glasses yes when you stir it up put some safety glasses on so it doesn't splash up in your eyes uh, the biggest thing is, you know, don't leave it laid on your skin too long. Just get in, get out, make your finish. So the Marmarino plaster we're using, uh, it is an Italian-made plaster. And it's a, like I said, medium size aggregate. The aggregate is the lime. It's not pulverized. They leave it rather large. So what's nice is it's going to go on pretty thick. Actually, each coat's going to go on at least, I would say, an eighth of an inch thick. So you're not going to see any of that black paint coming through when we're finished. It's going to be a two coat application and we're going to finish up with an, a lime wash and we'll talk about the lime wash when we get to it. But back to the plaster. Lime based plasters require special pigments. You have to be careful. Not all lime plasters are, can use universal pigments. Many of them require a lime compatible pigment. So you've got to be careful when no matter who you order it from, just pay attention or read exactly or get the proper information. Um, some people tell you that their plasters are lime, their colorants are lime stable. That's up to them. I just know the ones that we ha handle here and the ones that we deal with here require, um, they're just an 844 pigment system. That doesn't really mean a whole lot because when you order it, you pick your color. We just tell you, tint it automatically. But we use a Degusa, a company's called Degusa, and it's 844 pigment. That's all you really need to know. But we can tint it to any manufacturer, Sherwin Williams, Benjamin Moore, it doesn't matter. So let's get to it. Let's take some of this plaster. Let's get it on our trowel, and we're just going to load up the blade with not a lot of plaster. You can hear it scraping across the surface. That's the aggregate. You don't really get that sound with those nice smooth Venetians. They're not the same. It's a totally different animal. So we're going to put this on. This is going to be our bed coat. So. It doesn't matter if a little bit of black is peeking through here and there. It's not the end of the world if it is. Take the spatula, gather it up. This gets, you always want to work the blades. We're almost, almost flat and high up on it, somewhat higher angle. So almost flat, higher angle. Flat there. Yeah. Now we're not trying to go for a real smooth, smooth finish, but we're also not going for a, a lot of busy texture. Like I said, this is the base for the next coat of plaster. 
and I probably forgot to say it, the color of this is called cinnamon. Cinnamon slate, I believe. So I'm just going to go real quick, a couple finishing passes, just to make it clean. Now, that's it for that application. I would continue across the whole wall the exact same way. Bigger wall, I might use a little bit larger size trowel. Again, I'm using a medium, I'm sorry, a small size trowel. Uh, the biggest I've ever really used is a medium. I have the large trowels, but I, that's a lot of uh, trowel to use and it's a lot of plaster. Biggest thing, it, it covers more square footage quicker. Um, and it'll still give you the same look. So that's it for this application. We're going to let this sit. It has to dry 100, well, it has to dry. With lime, it's not 100% dry in between coats. We can kind of work wet onto wet, but for this one, I want it to be 100% dry. So let's let this dry. We'll come back, do our second application. See you in just a bit. Okay, so we're back, and it's dried. I let it dry to the touch. It's not a big deal. Usually if I do an entire room, I will let it dry completely to the touch because by the time I start a wall or one corner of the room, work all the way around, I'm dry, ready to go again. Second coat is very similar to the first. We're going to take the exact same tools, exact same material, the Mar Marino that's been tinted to our cinnamon slate, and we're going to apply the second coat. Now this time though, I am going to apply a little bit more pressure. Now just so you can see as well, the product has dried a little bit different than when it's wet. Sometimes it dries a little bit lighter. This time it dried a little bit darker is fine. That's why you always make a wet sample. So what's going to happen as I do this, I'm going to be putting this on a little bit tighter, meaning I'm backfilling all my first coat, or we could call it a bag coat. And this is going to give me a real smooth, smooth finish. And that's what I'm trying to achieve. Now I'm not going for like smooth as a piece of glass. Um, just going for a nice smooth finish. I Oops. And, um, you know, we're not going to get it as smooth as a piece of glass. We're going to get it like really, really smooth. And that's what we're going for because we don't want it to be really textured or irregular. And again, when you do the plasters, you don't want to work in lines or distinct patterns. And here's where some of my marmarino didn't mix in or the color didn't mix into the marmarino. All I'm doing is holding my arm to steady it because I am putting a little bit of pressure on here. Hopefully the wall that you're working on in your home doesn't move quite as much. Okay, there's that. That's it. That's simple. And it's, I mean, I could do a quick gather up coat, or not a gather up coat, but if I just want to grab some loose sloppy material that's kind of hanging out there, I can. But that's it. Real tight, real thin. I'm going to let this dry to about 90% humid state, not meaning uh, humid. So if I press on the plaster, I can, or if I touch the plaster, it's still damp to the touch. That way I know there's moisture still inside of it. If I touch it and it feels like just room temperature or it's hard as a rock, it's not going to have moisture in it. And what that means is, one, I can't compress it or burnish it. Two, it's going to be much harder for me to layer, or to not, I don't want to say layer, to blend in my lime paint. I want to put the lime paint on, I want to go wet into wet. I don't want it to be on top of it, I want it to become part of it. So I'm just going to let this set to about, uh, once it gets about 80 to 90 percent dry in that humid state. And it's one of those things, there's, I can't tell you how long it's going to take. It's You just kind of work it as you go or you learn as you kind of go with this. And what's going to happen is over time you'll become more proficient. You'll know exactly when it's the right time to hit it. I know what you're thinking or asking. How do I do a big room? Sometimes on a big, big wall, because we don't do the entire room at a time, it's just a piece, it's a wall at a time. Don't try to tackle the whole room, it's impossible. But if I'm doing a really large wall, I might have somebody going ahead of me and doing the marmarino coat, or the second coat of marmarino, and I'll come behind, or vice versa, with the lime wash. So let this dry, we'll come back, and we'll talk about the lime paint that we're going to use for our lime wash. So I will see you as soon as this dries. So we're just at the right stage right now where we call it in the humid state. Um, a lot of times if you take a workshop with us, we'll often refer to it as the plaster is still in love. So when it's still talking to everything around it, once it's dry, I can't hear you. You know, unfortunately that happens. So the plaster is a humid state, 90% dry. Now we're going to use lime paint in order to a lime wash backfill. Lime paint, just what it is, lime paint, comes from Italy. 
uh, when you open a can, it looks like a big junk of putty because it pretty much is. And then what you do is just add a little bit of tap water, stir it up to the consistency of paint, and go at it. The cool thing is uh, you can put it on a wall. We can burnish it. We can do so many things with lime paint, and you'll see those in other videos. But for today, we're going to take the paint straight out of the bucket, dilute it just a little bit, and I'm going to apply it with a black nylon bristle brush. Lime paint is very coarse, meaning it's, it's not like regular house paint. It's, uh, it's a little thicker and it's a little coarser. It has particles in it and they will, I mean, if, over time it'll kind of break down your brushes a lot faster than house paint. Now the one tool I do need, and I almost forgot, is my, uh, you know, garden sprayer. It's going to put tap water in it pressurize it and I'm just gonna give it a quick mist that's about it I don't need to go any crazier than that you don't want to see any dripping so what I'm gonna do now is take here's my lime paint crisscross herringbone I'm just gonna put it on straight out of the bucket now you can tell I'm still humid because if you can see it it's pulling the brown marmarino or the cinnamon spice marmarino back up a little bit what you don't want to do is get too crazy, meaning go too far ahead and let this dry. Because if you do, you're not going to have any luck getting it off. That's one of the reasons we sprayed the water. So here we go. Let's take our trowel and scrape off the excess. Get my putty. So I'm not using a lot of pressure, just enough. I want to get off the excess lime paint and I want the other lime to remain. I want in the plaster so I can get that nice, real cloudy look is what I'm going for. See, I got a lot of time to go in here and do what I need to do. Let me get some of this out of here where that tape is. So I'm just kind of stabilizing it. That's all I'm trying to do. I don't want to turn my back to you. Okay, so now I'm just kind of do some quick cleaning up. That's it, real simple. It gives that nice, fun, cloudy effect. A couple scratches here. I'll just get rid of those real quick. That's why you gotta be careful with your tools. You gotta, these boards are hard to work on because what happens is the uh, marmarino will stay on the tape just long enough for my trial to catch it. It releases and it comes back. So you got to be real careful. You don't get scratch marks. Now, when it's in, <laughs> now, when it's in this humid state, we can burnish it to burn the surface or compress it with pressure. So the tighter we compress it, the more light it's going to reflect. Now, the more light it's going to reflect really doesn't the marmarinos are different than traditional polished Venetian or smooth Venetian plasters. Let's don't confuse the two. So I can compress this, I can burnish this, and I'll get a nice soft luster out of it. And that's for this look, that's all I want. I don't want it real shiny. If I'm trying to go shiny, I would go a different direction, meaning a different material altogether. there. That's all I'm going to do to compress it. Because I just want a little bit. I don't want to go crazy with it. Pull our tape. Let's see what we get here. Nice black frame. Move these guys. Now, for this one, this is all I'm going to do. When it comes to top coating a marmarino finish, we can of course use our Italian polishing wax. We can use the Cheta Soapex, which is a soap-based sealer. 
We can use Lime Seal. It has, whatever you use has to be Lime compatible. Um, I'm not gonna, for this one, I'm not gonna seal it at all because I want a soft, soft, warm feel to this. Um, I'll do another Mar Marino sample and I'll show the various types of sealers and top coats that work with Mar Marino, but for this application, I'm not gonna put anything on it. Now, if you're gonna put this somewhere in your house, let's say you're gonna put it in your bathroom, I would definitely seal it. But this is for, uh, this sample is gonna go in somebody's living room, uh, so I don't want it to have any shine to it. I'm not too worried about fingerprints, somebody spilling something against it, just because I know where it's going and I know who uh, the clientele, they, you know, they're not too worried about high traffic areas. But, you know, kitchens, bathrooms, uh, anywhere, else you might want to consider sealing it. The cool thing about Mar Marino is an interior exterior. You can put it on the outside of your home and you don't have anything to worry about. It will stay and it will stick. You just have to follow the, the basic rules of surface preparation, base coating, application, and top coating. And when you do something like that for an exterior, you have to stay within the manufacturer's proprietary system. Don't change the rules because if something goes wrong, it's on you, not the manufacturer. But for this one, no top coat. I just want this nice, soft, simple, little, warm, lustery glow. And this is kind of, hopefully you can see it as it's, it's not real shiny, but you're not going to see my reflection in it. Just trying to see what you can see. All right. There you have it. French plaster, or I'm sorry, French country marmarino. Simple. My name is Ron Lehman. I am from the Faux School, and at the Faux School, I teach decorative, decorative painting workshops. I actually, you can hire me to come out and do commissions, residential, commercial, restaurants, casino, whatever you can think of. If it stands still long enough, we'll get some paint or plaster on it. If you get a chance, go to the website, check us out, thefauxschool.com. Again, I'm Ron. I'm from the Faux School. I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.